My dad came to this property in 1954. One of the biggest struggles that we had was water. And there is no shallow water here, and shallow water to me is anything under 500 foot deep. When starting out, probably in the late 50s, why dad had a Great Plains contract and they went to building dams on this ranch. Moving on into the 60s, we were in a multi-year drought and the property that we were on this morning, why dad took a hundred cows over there and they were there three weeks and he had to bring them home because they ran out of water. So in 62, while we drilled our first deep well, the well that furnishes this ranch is 1,780 feet deep. It is free flowing, it'll flow about a 100 gallons a minute with 50 to 60 pounds of pressure behind it. So I've got 20 some miles of pipeline on this ranch that, that I've put in over the years. I've got two rural water systems that we're tied into now. I've got one on the south end of the ranch is Bear Butte Valley, and I'm on the board of that of Bear Butte Valley water. And then also from the north, well, we've got Butte Mead water. So this ranch isn't ever gonna run out of water again. Well, we're still putting some pipeline in down there at the home ranch, and, and so we'd done quite a bit of it. And, uh, the first ones we kind of learned what we should not do probably and or that maybe there's a better way to do it and the later ones we've put in down there at the home ranch have been working really well. We have as much or more pipeline in on that ranch down there that we do up here. After putting pipeline in down there for years we we kind of had an idea what we wanted to do and and we saw the benefits of of the pipeline and water tanks down there on that ranch you know the calf health and you know, heavier weaning weights and being able to move the cattle around with the water a little bit and get them to utilize the grass where we wanted them to instead of just on the dams or the low spots. And, and uh, so we knew what we wanted to do. When we got this place bought, we had a pretty good plan in mind and had it kind of put together and talked to the NRCS. And when we got a chance to actually get possession of this ranch, we kind of hit the ground running and had the well drillers lined up and drilling the well. and digging pipeline in and I remember I brought Gary up here from the NRCS office in Bell and showed him where I wanted to put the storage tanks, showed him where we were going to put the well and looked up through these rocks and Gary said, well, I don't think you can hire anybody to dig up through them rocks. And I said, you let us worry about that. We'll, we'll figure it out. And so we leased our own excavator and just Ed went to digging and, and we got her put in. We got quite a little done that first year and I think by the end of the second year, we were pretty much had the main plan with the equip done for pipeline and tanks. My uncle Ed and dad Rich were partners in the operation and I was fortunate enough to come back after college. By the time I was kind of growing up, they'd already made the decision to start rotational grazing and the land management stuff. So I was, you know, brought up with no other way of thinking but to kind of rotate pastures and manage our grass and manage the land. The Blair ranches, both Two Top in Butte County and, and here on the home ranch in Mead County, grass is abundant. And it's not just because we had some adequate rainfall throughout this growing season. It's that way every year. Uh, you'll always notice that they seem to have more grass than, than the conventionally managed or the season long grazed pastures that are just across the fence or just down the road. Uh, that's not by accident. What does that mean for the general public or the taxpayer in New York City or Tampa, Florida? It means that the watershed up here in the northern Great Plains that eventually hits the Missouri River and then the Mississippi and then the Delta in Louisiana is cleaner. The raindrop that falls on this ranch or the one up in Butte County will find its way into the soil rather than in the form of runoff carrying any nutrients that might be present on the soil surface downstream with it. Uh, this ultimately leads to a, a 
a reduced impact or reduced footprint uh, for the hypoxia in the Gulf of Mexico. It means that there's abundant wildlife and clean air. It means that there are fewer needs for inorganic compounds to combat pests, insects, and fungus, and disease because the ecosystem is in a healthy state. And a healthy ecosystem doesn't require those unnatural uh, inputs. Not to say that zero are, are needed or used on this ranch, but it means that far fewer are, are necessary to continue doing business and being economically viable. We want a high quality rangeland. We want high quality water. We want bird species. We want wildlife. We want to raise a high quality cattle product. We want to treat the cattle right. I think it's a whole mindset on everything you do is about, well, let's do a good job of it. Let's do, let's do a quality job on everything we do. And I guess in my mind, it's, it's always paid off. We involve my nephews and we involve my kids in the operation so that they've got an appreciation for it. And I think if they've got a good appreciation for it, they'll want to come back someday.